Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do an RBF transaction, which stands for replace by fee. And I'm going to use um, Sparrow Wallet, so the desktop wallet, and a, an air-gapped cold card to show you this example of, of RBF. RBF, um, as I said earlier, stands for replace by fee. It's basically a feature that allows users to replace one version of an unconfirmed transaction with another version that has a higher fee. So an example of when you might want to use RBF is if you sent a transaction and the fee that you set for that transaction was low, right? And maybe that transaction is now stuck in the mempool and it's not confirming. Maybe it's been stuck there for a little while. In this, you know, in this moment of time, you know, an example could be maybe you sent the fee at like eight or nine sats per V byte. So it's going to be over here, um, sitting over there. And, and obviously there's quite a few blocks in front of it full of other transactions willing to pay higher fees. So yours isn't going to confirm for a while. But let's say that, you know, this is an important transaction that you want to get confirmed sooner rather than later. You would probably want in that case to use RBF to bump the fee up and to bring it into, um, you know, the, the next block, which is likely to be confirmed. So let's do an example of this. Going over to Sparrow Wallet, um, I have two wallets open that I'll be using for this example. The first is the wallet which I'll be spending from. So this is the one that's connected to my air-gapped cold card. And then the second wallet is the one that I'll be receiving too. So, you know, in, in real life, you might be spending some Bitcoin and sending it to someone else, or, or maybe you're sending it to yourself. Um, but either way, um, you know, I'll just kind of be using this wallet as a, a, a proxy for, you know, a receive address. So let's get started with this transaction. The first thing I want to do is send that first transaction and I'll kind of lowball the fee. So when I'm sending a transaction, I always like to start at the UTXO tab. And in this tab, you get to see all the different UTXOs associated with your account. And you get to select the one that you want to spend. Or, you know, if you want to spend multiple, you can select multiple. But for this example, let's just select this one here. Um, has the largest value, so it'll be easiest to kind of just spend and do the RBF. But let's select that one. We'll click here on Send Selected. To get our receive address, we'll go back over to this other wallet. Click on the Receive tab. It'll give us a label, RBF Tutorial. Copy that receive address. Now let's go back to our other wallet. And we're going to paste it here. So when you're paying someone, you know, you're obviously going to get the address from them and you can paste it here to pay them. Or if you have a QR code, you know, you can scan it by using your, your camera there. Let's give this the same label though, RBF tutorial. And this, in this example, let's say that we're paying this, you know, this, uh, address, uh, 250,000 sats. All right, and for the fee, let's make this fee, we'll say a little bit over, a little bit under nine stats per fee byte, how about? Okay. So now our, our transaction is constructed. We have our input here. We have the amount we're sending we have here our change amount. So this will be going back to this account and form a new UTXO. And then we have our fee here. Okay, let's create this transaction. So now it brings us to this screen where we have the transaction open. And if you wanna see whether or not RBF is enabled for your input, what you'll do is you'll click on the specific input over here 
the, the, the inputs will be all listed here. So if you have multiple inputs going into your transaction, they'll be listed out, you know, uh, here. Um, in this case, we only have one input, right? This one. So let's click on that. And down here, you'll see that RBF has been enabled for this input. So that means that if we wanted to, you know, bump up the fee because this, this transaction is stuck in the mempool, it will be allowed for this input. Um, so, and that's by default. So you usually don't have to like check this or click it if, if you want it to be enabled, it'll just be enabled by default, but that's just showing you for an example. Let's finalize this transaction. And now let's save this transaction on our SD card so that we can sign it on our cold card. So we'll take our SD card here. We'll put it in our SD card reader. Click here, save transaction. So we're in our SD card. And uh, don't mind this one here. That's uh, from before. <laughs> I messed up earlier, but let's just replace that with this new transaction. Okay. All right. And now we're going to sign it. So we can pop out the SD card, take our cold card. Put it in there. Okay. And we'll select this first option here, ready to sign. All right, so there's all the details of the transaction that we just made. It's 250,000 sats. It's going to that address, the network fee that we're gonna be paying. And that's the change back that we're gonna get back to our original wallet. Looks good. Press OK. Now it's signing. And there you go. It has signed the transaction and created a new file with that dashed signed. So that's the one that you're going to want to load once we put this SD card back into the computer. All right, so you can press OK, and now pop that ST card back out. And let's put this back into the SD card reader for the computer. We're going to click on Load. Choose the signed version. And now let's broadcast that transaction. go okay so we have you know we got some pop-ups here you know we're spending this amount from the cold card tutorial wallet and we've just received that amount or at least we've seen it we see in the mempool right now for the the hot wallet let's click on this to open up that transaction in the mempool dot space and you'll see this transaction it's unconfirmed it's sitting pretty far back in the mempool, right? There's quite a few blocks in front of it, so it's not gonna confirm for a while. And it has RBF enabled. So this, this uh, tag here is green, meaning it's enabled. All right, so now we've got our, our transaction stuck in this mempool, and <laughs> let's say we wanna bump it up now, all right? We wanna make sure this gets confirmed sooner rather than later. So let's go back to Sparrow. We can close out this transaction. We'll go to our transactions tab here, and you'll see this is the one that we just sent. We can open it up and we'll see this was the input and this is the change back. And if we want to bump this up, if we hover over this part here, we can click on this little hand with a plus sign above it. All right. And now this is going to construct the replace by fee transaction. So let's bump up this fee to 12.88. That should be good. Okay. So now this is allowing us to bump up the fee. Let's do this again. Create transaction. 
finalize transaction for signing, save transaction. So this time it's going to put in, in parentheses here, replace by fees so that we know the difference. We'll save. Okay. Now back to the cold card, pop this out, pop this in. Okay. Now we can click again, ready to sign. And this time it's going to say, oh, there's two different files. Which one do you want? Let's see. Going down. Oh, oh, let's press OK. And then it's going to say, do you want that one? I don't know if you can see that. It's the first one, has the replace by fee in parentheses, or the second one, which is the original. We obviously, we want the replace by fee, so we'll click on that one. Okay. Now again, it's going to show you all those details, and this time, you know, the network fee is higher. So that's exactly what we wanted to happen. Perfect. Press OK. It signs it. It's got the replaced by fee in parentheses dash signed. So that's going to be the signed version of the transaction that will load in a second. So we'll press OK. And then we'll pop out the SD card now. Put it back in the computer. <laughs> All right. Go back here. Click on Load Transaction. Make sure you select the signed version. Open. And now let's broadcast that transaction. All right. And there we go more notifications saying that it all went through. Let's open that up in the mempool. Wait for it to load here. But you'll notice that now the fee rate is higher. So once this loads, you'll see it's now in or it's expected to be in the next block, right? And here it even shows you that um, it's had some replaced by fee history. So it's showing you, you know, this is the most recent, and this was the original fee that you had set earlier, right? But now, um, yeah, so now it should be confirmed in the next block. Hopefully that'll happen pretty soon. It's been 11 minutes, so this could happen any minute now. But yeah, that's um, that's that's basically it. That's how you do a replace by fee using Sparrow. Um, again, you know, if it, you, the, the main time that you're going to use this is you've got a transaction, you sent it, you lowballed the fee, and you know, for whatever reason, it's not getting pushed through. It's been stuck in the mempool for a little while, or or maybe you need it to get pushed through quickly, right? Hopefully, in the next ten minutes or so. So that's when you would do a replace by fee to bump up that fee and hopefully get it, you know, within the next block. And let's see if we get lucky here. I'll give it enough, another few seconds. And then if not, I'll just call it a day. While we're waiting, um, one thing that I could show you is if we look at the previous transaction, so let's go back to this tab, you'll notice that um, this transaction has a notification now saying that it's been replaced. It gives you the link to the new transaction, and then it will show you here, you know, the same RBF history. So if you were to click on this one, then, you know, it'll just bring you to that new transaction that we had just sent, right? That's that. All right. Still no confirmation. And it looks like our transaction is getting dangerously close to being pushed out, right? And so I want to make sure it gets to the next block. So let's see if we can beat the miners <laughs> and make sure that we 
do another RBF. Oh, there we go. We just got pushed to the next block. So let's see how quickly we can do this. We'll do another RBF. Go to the transactions. Click here. Let's bump it up to 22 this time, just to make sure. Create transaction. Finalize for signing. Save. Number two. Pop it out. Pop it in. Ready to sign. Pretty sure it's this first one. Confirm it by looking at the network fee. Yep, it's a higher fee, so we'll sign it. Okay. Pop it out. Pop this back in. Load it. Signed version, OK, broadcast. Let's take a look at it. Give us a moment to load. Sometimes it takes a little while to propagate that transaction across the network. There we go. All right. So <laughs> now we have an even larger RBF history. We see started around nine, bumped it up to 13. And now we've most recently bumped it up to 22. Hopefully that will do it. Let's just give these miners a little bit more time to confirm this next block and see if we can get this transaction confirmed soon. There we go. Perfect. So I just went through. Now our transaction is in the in the most recent confirmed block, and we should be all set. If we go back to Sparrow, we can close this. We'll look at the transactions here. You'll notice that this little circle has one one slice of the pie, one one sixth of the of the pie filled, meaning it has one confirmation. We go over to our hot wallet where we received it. We'll see there. This is where we received it. So now this is also one confirmation. So there you go. That's how to do RBF. And you got a little example of how to do it a couple of times in case that ever needs to be done. All right. Thanks for watching.